Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast Show, where you'll learn the facts and hear the truth about the network marketing industry. Here's your host, Rob Cootie and Marie Cannon. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the MLM Solution Podcast. Once again, my name is Marie Cannon. And in case you didn't notice, or if you're not with us on video today, uh, Mr. Rob Cooty is not with us today either. I think he's testing me. He decided to take a break for a little while and see how I do. I'm, I'm thinking this is a test. I don't know. But we'll see. Hopefully yesterday went well. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that show. We talked about using the MLM company as your resource. Uh, and today is Tuesday, September 21st. It is Taco Tuesday. Uh, makes me want a margarita. Actually, is it lunchtime yet? Mm, I don't think it is. But I'm looking forward to that because I'm, I'm pretty serious when I say Taco Tuesday. <laughs> That's what my Tuesdays are about. I'm, I'm looking for a taco or two, perhaps two for two for Tuesday. What do you think? Two for Tuesday. That sounds good. Hey, as always, I uh, just wanted to remind you, please check out our website, the MLM solution.net. That's the MLM solution.net. You can see, um, links to previous uh, podcasts. If you've missed out on them, if you're looking for one in particular, you can check it out there. Uh, all the materials we have available to you. Uh, there's even a spot where you can contact us if you have any questions, any concerns, if you want to provide us any feedback on any of the shows that we've done. Uh, let Rob know he needs to get back soon rather than later because, you know, this is doing it by myself. It's not so good. So here, here's the thing, Rob, Rob and I are both big NFL football fans, and I've always said he's the play-by-play -play guy, and I'm just kind of the color commentary because he just has a wealth of information in his head. So this is kind of like watching an NFL football game without the play-by-play, -play, and you're just stuck with the color commentary, which is me. And if it's just the color commentary without the play-by-play, -play, it doesn't always make as much sense. Uh, it may not be quite as useful. It might be slightly entertaining, at least, hopefully. Uh, but uh, hopefully you'll get something out of the show today, even without Rob here, although we do miss him. So uh, if you also want to find our social media channels, you can find us by searching hashtag the MLM solution. That's hashtag the MLM solution. And while you're out on those social media channels, uh, if you would feel free to like, comment, and share on our various social media platforms, especially in the comments, maybe drop a hashtag bring back Rob. So maybe he comes back sooner. Um, that might be helpful too. I, I think I'm going to go do that. And then also our YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe there, you can also register for notifications. You click on that little bell twice. And that will notify you when we go live and when we upload new content. So you'll always be up to date with that information as well. And of course, uh, the thumbs up. If you want to give us a thumbs up, if you like what you hear, you understand the points we're making, we always appreciate that. And of course, if you're not understanding the points we're making, uh, drop us a question. Let us know. Uh, we appreciate any and all feedback. If you have any questions, if something we've shared isn't quite clear, let us know so we can get that clarified. Uh, quite honestly, <clears throat> a, fair, a fair number of our topics that we do here on the podcast come out of some of the comments and questions that we get because we realize we either didn't expand on something well enough or we didn't explain something concisely enough and we just need to clarify it a little bit more. So we do want to make sure we do that for you, but we don't know what we don't know. So tell us and then we'll know. So that is what, what in that realm. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on here quickly today, then of course, is our little promo for the day. Uh, wanted to make sure you knew about a special deal we have available for you. 
That is the book, What Not to Do in Network Marketing. But wait, it's not just a book. There's even more. You get audio files, training videos, and a tremendous amount of bonus content that will surprise you. Now, normally we have sold this in the past at the $197 price point, but for the next 24 hours, you can save $150, pick up what not to do in network marketing for only $47. You can either visit the website specific to what not to do in network marketing. We created it based on the acronym for the book. It's WNTD, what not to do in NM, network marketing. Dot net. So that website is WNTD in NM.net. So the acronym for what not to do in network marketing.net. Or if you're listening to this on a podcast and you're driving, mowing the lawn, doing something else where you can't jot that down, uh, you can always, of course, just go visit our website, the MLM solution.net and you will be able to find a link to what not to do in network marketing there and take advantage of that special. It is good stuff. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure you are aware of is our upcoming live event that we're working toward. Now, still have not made the decision of whether it's going to be a live in-person event or a live virtual event, we're really hoping for an in-person event. Rob and I just love being able to interact with you, having the energy in the crowd, getting to know you, meeting people. So <clears throat> our inclination is very much for it to be a live event. But with travel restrictions, COVID, pandemic, all the ugh, nonsense, can we be done? Am I right? Um, we may have to do it as a live virtual event. But either way, we want to make sure you know what's going on when it comes time for that live event. So we would love it if you would pre-register for information surrounding our live event. You can do that at mlmmastersacademy.com. That's mlmmastersacademy.com. If you go there, just take a quick minute to fill in that registration information. There's no payment. There's no fee, nothing like that. It's simply providing us with your contact information. So when we make the decisions around this event, we can communicate that out to you. And there is the possibility that we may put together a little survey um, and give you the opportunity to um, give us some input on what you want to see at the event, particular topics, uh, anything we can do to help you become more successful in your business faster. <clears throat> and then, of course, don't forget the first people, uh, first 100 people who register on the website as well as attend the live event uh, are going to get special VIP treatment. And Rob, is big about VIP treatment when it comes to live events. So you don't want to miss out on that. That's going to include special pricing, uh, some bonuses, and some other special things that, um, well, <clears throat> we just can't tell you about that right now. So make sure you go out there, mlmmastersacademy.com, and register. Take you less than two minutes and um, could save you a whole lot of money and provide some benefits you might be surprised about. So today, again, Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, and we are on podcast number 255. Today, we are talking about never put the cart before the horse, or alternatively, thought about using the title, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. So, Somehow we're out in the barnyard today talking about all the animals. And it was kind of funny because when I when I thought of those two uh, potential titles for this podcast episode, I'm like, what is it about the horses and the chickens? And, and it, it dawned on me, you know what, a lot of the 
theory behind some of these truisms, these sayings that last a long time, it's because they are fundamental truths that have been true until way back in the day. Like, you know, back when um, farming, agriculture was the main business that the majority of people were involved in. So when you talk about horses and chickens, people knew exactly what you were talking about. You didn't have to convey a whole lot of information to them for them to get the picture exactly right. And while I think, um, you know, the main portion of the message still gets through today, we are not a farming or agriculture community for the most part. Most of us live in cities, suburbs, rural areas, perhaps, but <clears throat> the number of people engaged in farming today is far, far less than it was back in the day. So, I mean, you just think about those those sayings right off the hop. And what do you think about? It was like, well, never put the cart before the horse. Well, if you think about it, it's because carts uh, were normally pulled by the horses. So the cart had to be behind the horse in order for him to pull that cart along. If you put the cart in front of the horse and you wanted the horse to move that cart, that meant the horse would have to push the cart Horses are not good at pushing. I don't know if you've ever seen them try to push something, but they're typically not <laughs> going to be able to exert enough energy, enough pressure in order to get that object to move as fast or as far as they can if they're pulling it. So by putting the cart in front of the horse, you're kind of defeating the purpose of what you want out of that horse that being getting that cart from point A to point B. And uh, not counting chickens before they're hatched, well, that's a little bit um, along a similar vein, but what does it mean? Well, if, if a chicken hasn't hatched yet, that means it's still inside the egg. So what you have is not actually a chicken. So you can't count the chickens because they're not there yet. They're still inside the egg. So you can count the eggs, but you can't count the chickens. Now, why would that be an important distinction to make? Well, you could have a dozen eggs. I mean, eggs, we all know, right? I, I mean, some of us may have never even seen a live chicken or, or dealt with them, but we're all pretty familiar with eggs, right? Like I just was at the grocery store this past weekend and picked up a dozen eggs in the carton. And I don't know if you're in the habit of doing this, but I always pop that carton open and I kind of move all the eggs around and I'm kind of counting the eggs, checking the eggs to make sure there's indeed 12 eggs in that carton and to make sure none of them are broken. Because what can happen? Well, before they hatch out of their eggs, sometimes the eggs would get broken. Sometimes the eggs would be stolen from the chicken coops. Foxes, dogs, cats, all sorts of little critters would get in there, steal the eggs from the chickens or damage the eggs. Um, sometimes the chickens themselves, when they're nesting, roosting, whatever you call it, again, <laughs> I'm not a farmer, I've never kept chickens. Um, you know, it's possible that they can accidentally damage an egg while moving about. If they step on it, if they sit on it wrong, if it has an extra thin shell, if there's something actually wrong with the egg. So even though the chicken may be sitting on three eggs and you're thinking, oh, okay, so the chicken's going to sit on those eggs, those eggs will hatch, I'll have three more chickens. Not necessarily. You may only get one or two. You may not get all three. So you have to be careful about counting them ahead of time. Now, the idea for this topic came up last week uh, in one of our episodes. We were talking about business builders versus customers. Uh, was the name of the episode. So if you want to kind of find out the origin story of today's episode, you can go back and check that one out, business builders versus customers. <clears throat> but of course, we were talking about focusing on business builders. And I think Rob had made the comment of, you don't want to start kind of trumpeting about this big business builder that you've brought into your business that you're all excited about that's going to really you know, kind of um, 
turbocharge your business and get things going because they are an experienced network marketer and they're going to bring a bunch of people with them or <clears throat> you've had dealings with them in the past and you know they're influential and successful and you just know that success in outside business is going to translate into network marketing and you get excited about the potential um, before they actually engage in the business and prove themselves um, to be real, real leaders in your business. So, so really what it boils down to again is that finding and identifying the leaders in your business and then working with them to help build their businesses, which in turn builds your business. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you just a, a couple stories just based on my experience. Uh, I had a woman one time um, in my sales organization, knew another woman, we'll call her Abigail, just for fun. Um, <clears throat> and Abigail was an influential member in her community. Like a lot of people followed her, knew her when she did things or recommended things. A lot of people would follow along and kind of trend in the same way. So um, my one of my business partners had a relationship with her and had identified her as a successful person who could be really good within the network marketing business model and, and build help build the business. Um, so this was a, a person who was newer to the network marketing uh, business model. So she asked me to go along with her and help present the business opportunity um, to Abigail. So I did that and we had a great conversation, really nice woman. She was very interested in the business opportunity, seemed very excited about it. As a matter of fact, she decided right then and there that, yep, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be all in. This seems brilliant. It looks like I can make a lot of money. It looks like I can help a lot of other people make money and it's going to be great. So of course, my business partner is excited beyond belief because it's like, woohoo, it's kind of like got, got the big fish, right? It's somebody with, <clears throat> with a following who's successful, influential. It's exactly what you want. You know, that scale of ambition, it was like a, a 9.8. It was super high. So, um, and, and I, I have to admit, I was a little bit excited about it as well. But <laughs> based on my experience, I wasn't quite as excited as my business partner who was, was newer to the industry. So anyhow, Abigail actually joined the business. Um, the um, network marketing company at that time offered three different distributor packages. They were all priced differently, um, each coming with a different amount of product to uh, experience and sample out and those types of things. So <clears throat> again, Abigail says she's all in excited about it. She's going to take complete advantage of this opportunity, comes in at the highest package level. And we're talking about a couple thousand dollar investment, which uh, is on the high side. We have a, in another podcast episode that Rob and I did, I don't know, a couple, three weeks ago, maybe, where, where we talked about the different uh, entry level points and what it costs to get involved in network marketing business and what, what makes sense and what doesn't. And uh, $2,000, a couple thousand dollars, uh, a little bit on the high side, if you go back and, and check out that episode. But uh, of course, that's encouraging, right? Because she wasn't just talking about she was going to do it and she'd sign up tomorrow. She signed up and paid like right on the spot. So it was a great start, right? My business partner, super excited. I'm excited for my business partner. Um, this would be a great you know, kind of introduction to, to the model, get some really good success right up front. And then guess what happened? <clears throat> Abigail disappeared, absolutely disappeared. Business partner tried to call her, tried to email her, crickets, nothing. Business partner <laughs> gets in touch with me. What do I do? I can't get a hold of Abigail. It's like, well, you know, you can only reach out in so many ways. And business partner asked me to reach out to Abigail. And I was like, all right, I'll, sure, I'll reach out to her. So I just did kind of a follow-up call. I said, hey, once again, wanted to welcome you to the team. Great to have you on board. Give me a call back. Let me know what we can do to help you get 
your business rolling and help you recoup your investment. Because of course, any solid business person, and we've talked about this in previous episodes as well, knows that once you've invested in a network marketing company, job number one is you want to get them their first check, right? And then job number two, shortly after that, is you want them to recoup that initial investment. Um, so that's that's obviously what we wanted to offer to Ab Abigail, getting her that first check and getting her, her investment back um, so she could start making money in the business. I also, crickets chirping, nothing. Well, weeks go by. The business partner comes to find out that Abigail received all of the product that was part of the distributorship package that she had purchased. And <clears throat> one of the, it was like a lotion dispenser or something like that. Uh, one of the lotion dispensers that she received didn't work. Like you would press on it and nothing would come out. You press on it, shake it up, twist it. I mean, anything she do with it wouldn't come out. So Abigail, Abigail's response to the poor business partner was basically like, well, if I can't 100% trust a product, I can't possibly promote it to anyone else. So boom, that was it. She wasn't interested in doing the business anymore at all. Spent a couple thousand dollars, got a bunch of product, and that was it. It was the craziest thing. And of course, the business partner was beside herself because I mean, all it would have taken was, oh, if you could, would have told me <laughs> the dispenser was broken, we could have gotten with customer service with a network marketing company, we would have gotten you a replacement, it would have been fine because, and this is one of the reasons why we say don't be product focused because there's so much that can, you know, go wrong with product, it's out of your control when it comes to product is, is the quality. Now, typically network marketing companies, they always have quality products. They always come in quality packaging that works, but nothing's ever 100%, right? So that broken dispenser was probably one out of what, 150 <laughs> that went out that who knows what happened. But anyhow, Tremendous disappointment for the business partner. Tremendous disappointment. Totally derailed her, lost her focus, got discouraged, all because she was kind of putting, you know, all her eggs in one basket with Abigail, thinking, oh, this is this is my one big leader that I need to really make this successful. And then that business partner ended up after a while just kind of uh, drifting off because. It was, it was just too discouraging. So that, that was one example. And then another time I, uh, I had a gentleman join my business and he was very excited about it, saw the value, was telling me about all these other influential people that he knew. And he was going to, uh, there was an event coming up shortly after he joined the business and he was going to bring his buddy, uh, Bruce, we'll call him, uh, to the event to show it to him because he just knew that once Bruce saw it, he'd be all in. And then he was going to just explode all over the place. And I was like, well, that'd be great. <laughs> and I was, I was all for it. I encouraged it. I told him about all the materials. I gave him ideas on how best to invite, to make sure he invites other people, not just Bruce. So he doesn't, you know, again, all have all his eggs in one basket. There's another barnyard chicken reference for you. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what ended up happening was he brought Bruce to the presentation. I was kind of watching him during the presentation and, you know, Bruce was sitting there arms crossed, not looking very happy throughout the whole thing. And it was just like, well, it's just some people, you know, they have a little bit of the RBF thing. They don't always look happy. And sometimes people sit with their arms crossed. That's known, known in psychology lingo as being closed off. But for some people, it's just, it's a comfortable way of sitting. Maybe he was cold because, you know, the event venue was kept a little bit cooler because there were a lot of people there. So, it, you know, body heat tends to make it a little bit warmer and can get uncomfortable. So any, any number of reasons, but I was looking at him and I was, I was a little bit suspect. So the business partner who who brought Bruce 
apparently Bruce ended up telling him, he's like, nope, I have no interest in this at all. This this business model doesn't work. I, I don't want to hear any more about it. And off he goes. So the business partner <laughs> that I had brought in, who was all excited about it, suddenly is just totally deflated, has all the air go out of him. He's like, oh my goodness. Well, if it doesn't work for Bruce and he's not interested, nobody else is going to do it. So that's that's one of those where I like to use that that Texas phrase, all hat, no cattle. So it was like, you know, bragging about what a big leader he was going to be and bringing in all these influential people, but ultimately, you know, doing doing nothing at all. So you, you have to be really careful um, with your excitement level and your investment in business partners you're bringing into your sales organization. <clears throat> now, I'm not saying don't be excited because, you know, we always want to exude a level of excitement because the business model itself, the potential for the income, the lifestyle, the time freedom is totally exciting and hopefully will always excite you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Too much talking. I'm missing Rob again. The back and forth works so much better. And I hope you guys aren't getting bored by the monologue either. So <clears throat> I'll try not to drone on too long because pff, boring. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, well, ultimately, I mean, the bottom line really is talk is cheap, right? You, you've got to be able to put your money where your mouth is. There has to be action. You can't, um, you can't look at folks you bring into your sales organization as leaders because of their outside success. Now, success tends to breed success. If people are motivated and used to being successful, the odds of them coming in and having that success translate into the network marketing realm is quite good. So you, you want to pursue successful people. You want to be excited about that. But in no way does outside success guarantee success in the network marketing business model, right? There are some differences. Network marketing is its own special little animal to a certain extent. There are some things that even experienced business people need to learn about how this industry works and how to really make it work for them and make money at it. Um, so, you know, the people who say they're going to be your leaders and bring in a lot of people, that's all well and good, and you should encourage them to do that, but you can't bank on it. You have to, as we talked about in the episode uh, last week or the week before, you have to let your back office identify your leaders for you. And the way they do that is by the volume that they're generating in their business, by pin rank advancement. Um, all that stuff, you know, you can go and review in that other episode. So, you know, you just you just have to be careful not to get discouraged because it, it can be a total roller coaster ride. Right. Like the business partner who, who brought Abigail into the business for a hot second, um, totally excited. So, you know, she's at the top of the roller coaster and then Abigail disappears and it's like whoop, down to the bottom. It's like, oh, that stinks. It's discouraging. It's disappointing. It makes you sad for a minute but you have to just get back at it and pursue more people. You, the more people you bring in to join you in the business model into the business building process, the better your odds are of finding those people who are really going to connect with it and, and take off and grow the business. So there, there is a saying that, that said, um, once someone shows you who you are or who... Once someone shows you who they are, you should believe them. Kind of, kind of the flip side of the talk is cheap, right? Somebody can tell you that they're going to be a leader, that they're going to bring in business builders, that they're going to make X number of calls in the next week, um, that they're going to attend every event. But until they actually do it, until you actually see them making those phone calls, following the business building system, um, bringing in new business builders, actually attending each of the events that they're supposed to be at, but not only attending, but bringing other people with them as well. 
that is kind of proof in the pudding. That's when you can really get excited because once they show you who they are, then you can believe them. If they're going to just talk a good game, it may or may not happen. So again, it's just being careful and kind of, um, I think, modulating the level of excitement you experience in this business. And, and, it can, and it can be high highs and low lows, and they happen very rapidly. But if you think about it, you know, Rob and I always talk about in, in two, three, three to five years, um, as long as you catch a company at a good time, you could really make a lifelong impact on your income and your lifestyle, right? So if you think about that, let's, let's call it five years. That's a really short time frame, right? When the typical career most people go into, they're working anywhere from 20 to 30 years in their career to achieve an income goal. Now, if you take that 30 years, there's going to be excitement. There's going to be disappointment. There's going to be excitement. There's going to be disappointment. But it takes place over 30 years, which is a pretty long time frame. Well, if you compress that to five years, the highs and lows come that much faster. So it's a little bit more of a you know whiplash effect in terms of the excitement that goes on. It, I, I always say, picture it like a slinky. You know that toy spring, that toy metal spring. I think they come in plastic now um, that we had as kids. You, you'd compress it together, and all the little coils were compressed together. So that's what we're talking about in the network marketing industry. So those coils are all tight, and they go up and down really fast. And you pull the slinky apart. You have that 30 year time frame that you're working with. The coils are farther apart. So the ups and downs, there's more space in between them. You have a little bit more time to recover, so to speak. So you just have to kind of maintain a certain level of excitement. Don't get too excited. Don't get too disappointed, but celebrate the wins. And it's okay to be sad about the losses too, but don't get discouraged to the point where you give up on your dreams because somebody else came into your business, promised big things, and then totally fizzled out. So that's the whole point of not putting the cart before the horse, not counting the chickens before they're hatched. You need to see the person actually come in, engage in the business, and start experiencing some levels of success. They get that first check. They start, you know, growing their group volume as they're bringing in other business builders. They're advancing in pin rank as they bring in more leaders and grow their volume. And that's how they identify as a leader. And that's what you can really get excited about. So hopefully you found that information helpful. I'm sure Rob would have had a lot more to say about it and probably would have come up with some really good stories of his own because he's he's had wilder stories than I have for sure. Um, so hopefully, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm hoping Rob will be back for our show tomorrow, um, Wednesday. We are going to be talking about who to sponsor, and when on our show. So join us 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning. We'll be talking about who to sponsor and when. May not be exactly what you think, but I'm not going to give anything away. You got to join us tomorrow and find out what that is all about. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate you being here. Um, once again, I'm missing Rob too. So Hopefully he's back tomorrow and we'll see you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. Download our podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast platforms. Visit our website at www.themlmsolution.net for additional important information, show details, and past shows. Follow us on Parler, Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, or the get notified button while visiting our other social media platforms.